Shalom. Before I get started with this lesson, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakal Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect that's out here laboring in all truth and sincerity to USA Shalom. And pretty much in this lesson, I wanted to do a response to the elder Apostle Gobar's video he did earlier today entitled, Life May Be Bullshit, But We Have the Greatest Hope Unlike Others. Okay? And when you listen to his video, he was pretty much responding, you know, to a video that he saw of this guy that you see on the right hand side of the screen, you know, and pretty much what you was hearing this guy talk about was pretty much how he, he sees life as hopeless. All right. He sees no point in life. You know, he has a very, you know, a, a pessimistic or nihilistic way of thinking because he's came to the realization that pretty much, you know, his life is meaningless, man. Like he, he can't form any type of, you know, a, a, a bond with anybody. All right. He doesn't see the, the, the reason pretty much to, uh, in, in so many words, he was pretty much making it seem like he didn't have any reason to live. So to say, man, you know, he just here, you know, passing the days until he dies is what I got when I heard from what he was talking about, which, like I said, that's a very nihilistic way of thinking. Now, I want to uh, look up these words that I'm using just for edification's sake. So, pessimistic. When you look up a uh, uh, pessimist, because that's really what pessimistic is just uh, referring to the characteristic of pessimism or pessimist. So you look at what pessimist means. It says one who habitually expects the worst, one who exaggerates the evils of life, one given to melancholy or depressing views, a universal complainer. All right. And that's pretty much the spirit that this guy was giving off. Okay? Because he... And he's seeing that hey, this life... You know, it... There's, there's no hope in this place, man. Alright? Because see, Esau Edom, the so-called white man, has set up this society to make this one giant rat race. Alright? One big-ass, you know, mindfuck, man. Alright? And... You know, what we, you know, sometimes call this shit like the Matrix, man. Because everything in this life is pretty much, you know, bullshit. Which is true. You know, he 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 was correct when he was speaking on that, man. Alright? But at the end of the day, hey, that's, you know, we can't, you know, get fully sucked into that, man. Because we understand that it's, it's a life beyond this life that we have been given here in Babylon the Great, man. All right, which is why, you know, Apostle Gabar said we have, it says uh, this life may be bullshit, but we have the greatest of hope unlike others. Because, see, you have people that, that think like this and, and they'll go into all these, you know, different tirades of, you know, how pretty much this life sucks. And I, when you listen to this dude, like he's pretty much, you know, one one move away from, you know, deleting himself or deleting others, man. Like like Apostle Gabar said, man. Hey, the, 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 he'd probably be, you know, a, a good candidate for the most high to use as a death angel to pretty much, you know, uh, send out judgment unto others. And then, you know, he'll off himself, man, you know, because this is really, you know, uh, just listening to these different, you know, ways that these people speak. He has a very black pill type of thinking. All right. Now, I looked up this word black pill, you know, I've heard it used. You know, you got all these different, you know, pill movements, right? So this is off of Urban Dictionary. It says the black pill is is basically the ultimate and hardest to swallow red pill. It says it is about realizing nothing matters and there is nothing you can do that will change anything. It deprives you of all positive thought and makes you want to get some sort of meaning 
out of this limited time we have, basically extreme nihilism, that's why it is not called a red pill since beyond that, right? So like I said, uh, I used the word nihilism earlier, or nihilistic. So let me uh, go into the meaning of that word before I go into really what I wanted to talk about, you know, and Lord willing, you know, I'm not being all over the place with these uh, definitions. All right, I'm going to get into the scriptures in a minute. I just wanted to, you know, make the point. All right. So when you look up what nihilism means, it says the doctrine of negation. It says from the German nihil nihilismus, from Latin, nihil means nothing at all. So pretty much it says in philosophy, an extreme form of skepticism, the political sense, rejection of fundamental social and political structure. And that's that's really, you know, when you heard the God speak, that's really, you know, uh, what it was. All right. Because like he says, he sees that this this life pretty much sucks, man. All right. Like he's like he was saying, he has he said he he has no love for anybody. He can't form any type of uh, uh, uh a pair he can't pair bond with anybody all right he felt lonely you know and he doesn't see you know the, the whole point of uh, of life all right but that's the same mentality that you can kind of see you know we uh we can see us agreeing with him to a, a degree when it comes to this world man because hey this world is through this world is bullshit this life sucks man all right which, like I said, goes back to that uh the the black pill thing, because it says it's about realizing nothing matters and there's nothing you can do that will change anything. It deprives you of all positive thought and makes you want to get some sort of meaning out of this limited time that, that you have. But what different uh, what differentiates us from the people that think like this is that we have a hope. You know, we have hope outside of what this world offers, man. All right. So let me get these uh, scriptures in, man. Okay. This is Sirach chapter 25 and 13. And it reads, Give me any plague but the plague of the heart and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. Right. So dealing with the first half of the scripture, it says, Give me any plague but the plague of the heart. All right. And when you go into that word heart, it means mind. All right. So the real, rate, the real way you will read this in modern, in modern English would be give me any plague but the plague of the mind. And, and you know that hey, when your when your thoughts are heavy on your mind, hey that that will uh it will weigh you down, man. It will it will literally, you know, destroy you. All right. Stress, worry, you know. And like I said, when when you look at life as meaningless and you have no way of pretty much, you know, uh finding a positive outlook or what they will call you know, a, a silver lining, and that, that can lead you down a very dark path, man, all right, to where, like I said, you will delete yourself or you will delete others and then delete yourself, man, because you don't see any purpose of you being here, all right, but we, we understand why we're supposed to be here, man, because and we understand through the scriptures, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, the Lord put us in this position, all right, because we sinned against him, man. All right, we broke the covenant that we made with our uh with our power, and therefore in the Lord's anger, all right, He put us under these nations. He put us in the worst case scenario that we could ever thought could happen to us. All right, all because of we disobeyed the Lord, man. But the 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 like I said, the silver lining of that is that we have hope that the Lord is going to return and deliver us out of this position. All right, we have a hundred percent faith. That when Yahweh Shah returns, man, that he's going to set the world aright back into the original state of, like uh, we read about in Genesis, as the being the Garden of Eden. Now, the Garden of Eden essentially is the whole planet. Now, it, it is a specific area, okay, but essentially the, the whole world is the, is the Garden of Eden, man. Paradise, man. All right? And in order for us to get back to that, we understand that this world must get worse before it gets better, all right? Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. But see, these people don't understand that, man. And that's why when 
when you start seeing the, the, the wickedness that's going on in the world, you see the direction that the world is going in. If you don't have the scriptures to pretty much, you know, help, you know, uh, 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 balance out those thoughts in your mind, man, that shit away on you and it, it can destroy you, which you can see in, in the mind of this guy, man, his mind is gone. His, his mind is destroyed, man. All right. But we understand these things must take place first, man. All right. So actually, before I get this in second address, I want to get this in Proverb chapter 13, verse 12. And it reads, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Right. So it says hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Right. So when you don't have anything to hope after. All right. Like I said, it, it, it destroys your mind, you know. You you don't you don't find solace in anything. You don't find anything worth fighting for, you know. Uh, nothing like that, man. Like I said, you will be destroyed. Okay. It says, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life, right? Because when you when you finally find hope in something, all right, that gives you that that uh, that push to keep on fighting, man. All right, to to labor, which is why a, in in this truth, okay, we are extremely 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 blessed. To be given, you know, the uh, the spirit to to know what comes next, man. All right, that what that we we have an expected life after what is you know uh, uh going to happen here in Babylon the Great, man. All right, what's going to happen to Esau, Edom? Life after Edom, you know, like they got that uh those documentaries, uh, like for one instance, you got Surviving R. Kelly. Hey, it's it's going to be a uh, a. Uh, uh, surviving Esau Edom, man, you know, when we're in the kingdom and hey, we're going to be able to reflect back on life here in Babylon the Great and we're going to, you know, take great solace in the fact that, look, and hey, we, we, we made it through, man, you know, Lord willing, the world of the elect, we made it through and everything that's going to take place after what we saw and experienced here in Babylon the Great is going to make us appreciate the kingdom that much more. That's why when you read in Romans, let me get this real quick in Romans chapter eight. Where we at? Romans chapter eight, verse eighteen. And it says, "For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be received in us." Right? Because, hey, man, we all are catching some type of hell in this place, man. And at times you can kind of get in the spirit that this dude was in, man. Okay. You know, you go, you go through certain events in your life. All right. You, you, you know, battling certain, uh, ailments in the flesh, you know, you got demons on your mind. That's, that's plaguing you, you know, like I said, you got events in life. Like, Hey, you, uh, you know, your woman might leave you, you know, your kids might leave you. You know, uh, uh, certain deaths may take place in your families. You know, you might uh, uh, catch hell on your job. You might lose your job. It's just a hey, scenario after scenario after scenario could happen. But at the end of the day, none of that even fails the comparison to what the hell is about to come now. All right? Because we understand that, look, shit is about to get a whole lot worse. So the little BS that we're going through right now really shouldn't even have you in the spirit of no depression. Or, you know, uh, uh, being low. Now, like I said, you're going to have low points in this faith. That's 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 a given. But that's why the one scripture that, uh, you know, Paul said, you know, about knowing how to uh, pretty much, roughly paraphrase, know how to act when you're uh, abased and knowing how to uh, uh, act when you're on high. You know, I forget how exactly it's worded, but, you know, you catch the drift, though, man. Okay, so like it says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not to be compared with the glory which shall be received in us. That's hope. That we know that it's better times coming to get us through the sufferings that we go through. All right. And especially the suffering that we're going to uh, endure going through, you know, the time of tribulation, Jacob's trouble, leading all the way up until the hour of temptation. All right. None of that is going to mean anything, no matter how fucking terrible it's going to be, because it's going to be terrible, man. But the kingdom of heaven and the glory that awaits us in the kingdom of heaven should outweigh anything 
that you uh that you're going through because hey when you just meditate on the on how good the king how great the kingdom's gonna be man that should push you through you know and that's that's the thing that we have versus what the people in the world have man and that's that's what puts us on a uh, on a, a whole another level uh, above and like the elder Ashiar says here in Charlotte and hey, we have an advantage over the people in this world man. Because we have Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. We have the scriptures. We have the spirit of the Lord, man, to understand these scriptures, man. But that, but these people don't, and that's why you see, uh, uh, uh people like this individual that Apostle Bar, you know, did the video on, man, because they're through out here, man. Okay, and hey, it is it is what it is at the end of the day, man. That's why at the end of the, you know when you look at our situation. The scripture, the scriptures like this, for example, this is Second Ezra chapter fourteen, verse thirteen. It says, "Now therefore set thine house in order, and reprove thy people, comfort such of them that be in trouble, and now renounce corruption." All right, and we we're setting our houses in order now, starting with our salesmen, you know, to get to get ready for this great tribulation that's coming, man. Okay, and we're and we're helping our people set their houses in order too, man. Hey, reproving them, rebuking them, all right, getting them, uh, getting them ready, as well in the spirit, all right. So they they know what to expect when all when all hell breaks loose. It says, "Let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times, for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen." shall be done hereafter and that's exactly you know what what we're talking about man you can't you can't be a hundred percent you know uh, uh uh in your thoughts like that man okay and you can't be you know fully in that nihilistic pessimistic way of thinking because it, it's balanced to it you know we always talk about the destruction the great evil that's coming upon the earth but you gotta understand that it's also a a, a good that's coming too and when you look, you know, when you look at it in a nutshell, man, these these evil things that are coming on the earth, man, are actually for our benefit, man. You know, like the scriptures say, for the controversy of Zion, the Lord is doing all this in the earth for our sake, man. So at the end of the day, we got to put off those weak natures and, and, and rein in, you know, those thoughts that we that we get sometimes, man. Because hey, if you if you just fully, you know, uh uh. Let your thoughts run wild, man. That shit will destroy you at the end of the day, man. Because those demons will hop in your mind and, and have you thinking all type of crazy shit, man. And you'll end up bugging out as you see individuals in this life, man. That's why hey, it's a it's a blessing to have this truth, man. Because a lot of guys that will see the things that we're talking about but don't have Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah to help, you know, balance that out, man. They'll, they'll go crazy, you know. Because everybody see the direction the world is going in. They see how, you know, these Edomites are trying to establish their new world order. And they're pretty much letting it be known that, look, they're trying to turn the world into a prison. That you will have no rights. All right. That, hey, you, you pretty much will be a slave. All right. For eternity. If they will be allowed to establish, you know, their kingdom forever, man. But we know that through the spirit of the Lord, that Esau is, is, is written to fail. All right. He's not going to win in the grand scheme of things because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, all right, set bounds that this man can't pass. All right, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, all right, is it, pretty much, you know, getting ready to, to overthrow this man and set up the kingdom under the rule of Yahweh Shah, all right, which the elect of the nation of Israel will be joined heirs with, but ultimately all Israel will rule in the next world to come. That That's what gives us a, a, a solace. And is helping us prepare to uh, endure these times that we're seeing because shit ain't got real yet, man. Here it is. You got people giving up on life, all right, because they can't pay bills because they woman, they woman left them or they, you know, these women out here, they're bugged out, all right, period. But at the end of the day, it's greater evils that have to take place before, all right, we get the kingdom of heaven, Okay. Because Jacob's trouble is described as a time that is like none, nothing that's happened in the world. All right? We understand it. It's about to be some shit that we've never seen before 
take place that's really going to try our faith with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But we have hope that the Lord is going to get us through these things, man. You know? And that's what that's what uh, uh, keeps us going. Because like I said, it's balanced knowing that shit's going to get worse, man, before it gets better. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 4, verse 25, and it reads, What will he then do? Uh, sorry, verse 20... 26, Slaki. Second Ezra 4 and 26. It says, But as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, I will tell thee, for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come right. And and we're constantly out here telling the people of the destruction that's coming. Because like I said, you got people losing it over over little shit. Alright? Unpaid bills, alright, they uh, you know, Whatever situation they got going on with jobs, all right, marital issues, you know, mental mental issues, things things like that where things are still kosher though, man. You're still able to go to the store, you're still able to go get food, uh, you're able to move around with whatever so called freedom you have. But that, that that evil is so, man, as we've as we're seeing, all right, being talked about in the news, all the, you know, the uh the destruction that's going over there in the so-called Middle East that's that's gonna come over here, how America's gonna be in, invaded, you know, eventually locked down, martial law is gonna be uh implemented, it's gonna be an economic collapse to where all you people are gonna lose your your riches was and we're gonna, you know, lose our uh, our money too, but we don't have our uh our soul, spirit and everything into that though. But at the end of the day, that that evil is sown and but that destruction hasn't came yet, man. All right, so we're anticipating the uh, the destruction of this uh, of this uh, this kingdom of this society. It says, "If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that which is sown with good." So we understand that all this shit must go down before we start getting the good, the goodness of what the scriptures talk about. Like when you hear these Christians talk, and they talk about all the you know. Uh, how they can't wait for the kingdom of heaven and this, this, and this. But they don't never go into, you know, the hell that's going to take place before they get to the kingdom of heaven. All right? You, you'll hear them speak about things like the raptures, which the rapture is nothing, all right, that's talked about in the scriptures, man. You can't find that word nowhere in the Bible, all right? Because they think that when all hell breaks loose, they're going to be up in the sky, all right, uh, avoiding all the trouble. No, you're going to be right here in the mix too. Just like we always speak about, you know, even with us. At, at the men of the Lord, we're going to be in Jacob's trouble too. But the difference between us and, and, and the rest of you people out here is that the Lord is going to be with us, man. All right? Uh, uh, a hope scripture to refer to is uh, Psalm 34 and 7, man. The angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear him. Okay? Another scripture. Hey, strive for the truth until death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. He that endureth unto the end, all right, him shall uh, the Lord, you know, pretty much give power over the nations. Th these are our, our, our hope scriptures that help us, you know, fight through all right, those thoughts that come into our mind like, yo, yo, our hope is lost and all that bullshit. No, our hope is not lost, man, because we have faith, all right? And faith is the greatest thing that, that we could have in these times that, that we're entering into, man, okay? Because, see, you people... You, you've all heard the truth at some point in time or another, all right? You've walked past the camp. You stumble across the video, all right? You know people in your personal life, whether it be families or friends or whoever, that that's uh, that they know that they're Israelites and they didn't told you. But you, you don't believe in it. Therefore, your belief system, your construct of whatever, your, how your mind works, what you put your trust in, you put that over the truth, man, Okay? And that's why at the end of the day, you're going to be found to be in the, in the mind state just like this guy in that day, man. That's why the scriptures tell tell you, I think that's in Matthew, where it says, uh, when the Lord returns, shall he find faith on the earth? Because it's going to be a complete spirit of hopelessness on these people out here when all hell breaks loose, man. All right. But before all that happened, the Lord gave you an opportunity to hear the word, though. All right. This is Hebrews 4 and 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, 
not being mixed with faith in them that heard it, right? Because you had, you, hey, you, you all were given the opportunity to hear this word, but you didn't believe it, you know? Like it says in Romans, man, have they not heard, all right? Have they not heard that this word has went out all throughout the four corners of the earth, man? But they didn't have the faith mixed in them to believe that this truth was the truth, man, okay? That's your truth, what they tell you. This is That's your truth, man. I have my truth. No, it's only one truth, all right? And that truth is that the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimei all right, is, is, you know, fulfilling prophecy, which is the words written in this book, to let us know what's taking place, that how this is all the will of the Most High, all right? And, and hey, the water of Yahweh by Shimei all right, for calling us into this word, Lord willing, we're of that chosen number, all right, that will be delivered, you know, uh, when all when all is said and done, man, you know? That's what we're fighting for, man, to Lord willing be of that uh, 144,000, man, all right, to be of the elect, okay? That's why we're doing this word, man. Or sorry, that's why we're doing this work, all right? Because the Lord, he set us free from the uh, from the matrix, man, okay? This is John 8 and 32. It says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, all right? We're no longer bound by the confines of this world, man. Because hey, we understand why everything is like this, man. All right, going back to uh, Sirach 25 and 13, it says, Give me in the plague, but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness, but the wickedness of a woman. All right? So we, we have not, you know, uh, uh, pretty much, you know, been given over to that nihilistic way of thinking because, hey, we see why everything is going on like this. And that's really because there, there's no uh, uh, true judgment going on in the world, man. All right, that the wicked has been given the reins of rulership and under his reign, man, he's destroying everything, man. All right. The minds of the people. Okay. And that's why a lot of these people are in the spirit of this guy in this video, man, because they, they don't see, all right, how important Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is to this world, man. Okay. Hey, this, this devil literally is trying to remove God from the, from the planet, the idea of the most high from the planet. All right. But we have been given the truth. To let us know that, look, we understand that the, these women, the way they act, is because they they don't have any guidance, all right. Because they don't they don't see the significance of of what men are are, are put here for, and the men are finished because the men don't have a uh, don't 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 have their uh their their God, which is Yahweh you know, because like we understand the orders of the household, man, all right, but. In a nutshell, the people in general, they don't they don't see the significance of, of why the scriptures are so important. All right. Because a lot of the people look at the Bible as some mythological fairy tale book that you can just read for inspiration. No, man, this book is literally playing out before our eyes right now, man. And, and hey, we've been given, you know, uh, uh, the eyes to see, man, and the ears to hear. OK, which makes us blessed. But we understand why these things are happening, man. And that's the main thing out of out of everything that I'm saying is what, you know, uh, what gives us sauce, man. But we understand why. All right. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 11. It says, For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain. Their labors are unfruitful. And their work's unprofitable. It's like uh, unprofitable, right? All because you despise wisdom, which, what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord, all right? So you hate this word, therefore, that's what you, uh, that's, that's why you're miserable. That's why you have no hope. That's why everything that you do in this life is looked at as vanity, all right? Because it has no meaning without the truth, man. It has no meaning without Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, man, all right? That's why when you hear everything that we talk about, man, Hey, that that gives you uh that that nihilistic pessimistic way of thinking, because you see, man, well if everything is pretty much you know uh uh going to go to shit anyway, why should I care? Why 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 is this life worth living? All right, you like Jake for example, you have that uh that saying amongst amongst you know so called black Latino Native Americans mainly blacks, all right. Well, we're all gonna die from something someday, so hey, whatever you know. Nah, man, that that's that's the wrong way to think, because we hey th these these scriptures give you life, okay? 
They give you, you know, uh, uh, understanding. We we have been given our purpose back, man. And that's the reason why a lot of our people are, are, are finished because they don't know their purpose on the planet, man. So uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 lets you know the whole duty of man is to fear the Lord and keep his commandments. All right? Nothing else outside of that matters, you know? But at the end of the day, when you hear these things taking place, hey, we understand that, look, these things must happen. All right? Matthew 24 and 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right. Because at the end of the day, hey, we were warned of the signs that was going to take place. You know, when, uh, it's like, I don't know what happened. It's like, yeah, we were warned uh, uh, of all these things that were going to take place before Yahweh Shah made his return, man. All right. So as it said, man, the, uh, the, it says the end is not yet. All right. Because it's other things that got to take place, man. It says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrow. And that's why, hey, ever since 2020, when the whole, uh, 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 you know, C-19 pandemic joint happened, all right, that literally broke millions of people. And, and this... uh. This mentality that this guy has was really spread all throughout the world after the after the demic, because it's just like shit just kept happening more and more and more. Like it was an article that came out that said that pretty much it's a um damn how does it word it? Pretty much it was like a a a, a compilation of sorrows that just con that's continuing to pile up on the people. All right, and a lot of these people are are, are snapping. Suicide rates are going up. Depression rates is going up. All right, these people are finding, are trying to find more and more ways to escape reality, which is why you see, you know, drugs and alcohol being consumed at the, at a higher level. All right, you seeing these people, you know, uh, getting more into like virtual reality and different things like that because they're trying to escape the current condition that they that they uh they're in, man. But it's gonna come in time. To where Yahweh by Shimei Awashah is going to make the world so bad to where there is no escape. That you're going to have to face reality head on. And a lot of people aren't, aren't ready to uh, to handle that, man. Alright? Because it said these are the beginnings of sorrow. So, hey, when when uh when you read in 2nd Ezra, alright, when Ezra saw that, uh saw the vision of, of how the earth was going to be in that day. He said this, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 16 verse 17. It says, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days, okay? And that's that's pretty much, you know, the spirit of everybody now, man. Because they don't believe in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. They don't see a savior coming to uh, deliver them, man, all right? Because all these so-called um, belief systems that they, they have now, they so-called believe in, they don't really believe in it. And and uh, the, the C-19 proved that, man. You know, these constructs and beliefs that these people claim to have, they they don't really they don't really hold on to it wholeheartedly like they claim they do, man. All right, because if they did, they they want to ran down to those uh, you know, to get those damn jump shots, man. All right, but we through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, we know that Yahweh Shah is coming back to deliver us, man. All right, and how do we know that? Because he he told us this, man. This is the whole reason why we have these scriptures, man, which are known as the comforter, okay? This is St. John chapter 14, verse 16. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he, he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because they see of him not, neither know of him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you. And shall be, it's like he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. All right. And that's what exactly what the, uh, uh, what Yahweh Shai, uh, gave us, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai gave us, man. Comfort through these scriptures. Okay. Because we know that the Lord is with us, man. All throughout the scriptures. The Lord told us, tells us that he's with us. I always bring the example that when you, when you type in fear not into the blue letter. 
Fear not is mentioned 144 times, all right? Which that in itself should give you, you know, a, a peace in your spirit because the Lord is, is making it known, all right, that he is with us, man, all right? So anytime that we we feel that, you know, uh, that life is becoming too much for us, that our spirit is getting too heavy, we go right to these scriptures and they comfort us, man, because it, it's a it's a it's a verse where right? literally everything that you feel, all right, every event that's that's going on in the world, everything that you see, it's a scripture that deals with that, man. All right, that's why verse eighteen it says John fourteen and eighteen, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you, and Yahweh is literally comforting us when we read these scriptures, man. Okay. So that, that's what gives us hope at the end of the day, man. All right? Because we have help. We have a Savior that's come back to deliver us, man. All right? We have something to look forward to, which is the kingdom of heaven. All right? After this uh, this world, as we know it, is destroyed. We know that Esau Edom is not going to win. All right? That his new world order is going to fail, man. And he's going to be taken down along with other nations that think they're going to rule too. And we're going to be given a rulership in which we will never be destroyed. We will never sin again. We will never die. We're going to be immortal, man. These are things that we have hope in, man. Okay? Psalm 146 and 5. Happy is he that hath the power of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the is in the Lord his power. All right? And, and, and we're ecstatic in the, in the truth, man, because we have our, our, our connection back to our God. All right, we have his name. We have the ability to tap into our language, which is the Hebrew, the Lashawan Kodash, and speak with our power directly. All right, and we know that Yahweh and the angels are, are, are sending our prayers right up to the Heavenly Father, and they're being answered. We know for a fact our prayers are being answered, man. How, much, how, how can these people of the world, how can they say that, man? What do they have hope in? What, who, who can they really talk to and, and, and really understand what, what they're going through? They don't have anybody, man. But we have Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. And the greatest thing that, you know, I could uh, think about to add to what I'm saying is that, look, when you read John 17, that's a chapter that I implore all to read. Yahweh Shai literally prayed for the elect, man. So if you have the, the son of the heavenly father praying for you, then, hey, what else do you need? Because he made it to where he... He gave us what we needed to get through these times that we're we're, uh, we're about to enter into, man. And I'm going to read a little bit of this. This is John 17 and 9. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Right. So the elect belongs to Yahweh Shai, man. All right, Yahweh gave Yahweh Shai the elect, man, those first created spirits, man, okay? And it says that, you know, uh, uh, the Lord is, gl is glorified in them because when we hey, when we do everything that we do, we give praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai because without him, we can do nothing, man. We are nothing, man, all right? It says, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, right, because at the end of the day, as as we read earlier in uh John uh fourteen, hey Yahweh Shai left, but he gave us the comforter, all right, which is his spirit, man. That's why he says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, all right, because hey, th these scriptures are Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's spirit speaking to us, man. Okay, so we're not alone in this world, man. All right. It says, Now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. So yeah, we're we're connected to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's why you always hear us speak about, hey, we're one body, mind, soul, and spirit. Okay, we're joined to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. It says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled, right? Because the elect is in the hand of the Lord, all right? And none can take them out of the hand of the Lord, man, okay? Yeah, it says, verse 13, it says, And now come I to thee, 
And these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in in themselves. It says, it's like I'm reading it over, verse 13 again. And now, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world have hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Right. And, hey, when we were in the world... We we always felt that we couldn't connect with this place, man. All right? And especially when we came into this truth and we were rejected by the world, a hey, Yahweh Shah came to us through these scriptures. And when we read them, hey, we, we understand that we're not alone, man. All right? And, and the water Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah for the brotherhood as well because, hey, he, he showed us that it's like-minded men and women that think how we think that lets us know that we're not by ourselves, man. But the, the main way we know we're not by ourselves because when we read these scriptures, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh told us that he's with us whithersoever we go. Okay? So it says, I have given them thy word and the world have hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Because, hey, we're not with this current uh, 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 construct of how this world is being ran. Because this world is being ran in wickedness and we desire righteousness, man. Okay? I pray not that thou should take them out of the world but that thou should have keep them from the evil, right? Because the easy thing that could have been done is just like how, you know, uh, when you read about how the Lord translated Enoch, how the Lord translated uh, uh, Elijah, and how our Lord was translated. He he beamed them up in those chairs, and, and they were taken out the world, all right? But the Lord kept us in the world, all right? But he prayed for us, okay, to uh to be able to endure the evils that's in this world, man. All right. It says, I pray that thou should not take them out of the world, but that thou, but that thou should have keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world, because we are of the spirit of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which this world despises Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's why we're not of this world. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. OK, it says to sanctify them through thy truth. Let me look up this word. Sanctify real quick. Bear with me. All right, this word sanctify Strong's G thirty seven. It says to render or acknowledge or to be venerable or hollow, to separate from profane things and dedicate to the most high, to dedicate people to the most high, to purify, to cleanse externally, to purify by expiation, flee from the guilt of sin, to purify internally by renewing of the soul. All right. And that's why, as it said, Salakia, as it said, to purify internally by the renewing of the soul. So, and when we when we feel, you know, uh, uh, our spirit getting heavy, and we turn to these scriptures, and the Lord, you know, uh, He gives us solace to our spirit, man. All right. So it says, sanctify them. Through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And at, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the, through the truth. Right. So we're made holy through these words because Yahweh Shai is holy, man. All right. So we're being separated from the wickedness of this world. All right. And we have been given a hope that if we endure the wickedness that we're seeing in this world and continue on and striving for righteousness, we're going to get the uh, the promise, man. Just as our ancient forefathers all, you know, uh, how they all labored while they were here, you know, during their uh, their current incarnation, during them periods, they all strove, all right, in righteousness until they until they died because they, they knew that they were going to inherit the promise if they continued in what they believed in, man. And that's the same sentiment that we take, man. It says, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, 
which shall believe on me through their word. Right. So the elect, man, we all hey, have that covering of Yahweh Shai. He prayed for us, man. Lord willing, we're of the elect. Yeah, we just got to keep fighting, man. All right. Don't let Satan, all right, uh, uh, overtake your mind, man. Because we do have hope. We, a hey, we, our hope is far surpasses anything that these people hope for in this life, man. All right. And that's, that's, that's what separates us from the rest of this world, man. So I'm going to end it right here. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakar Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect. Until next time, I say Shalom.